Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly in My Blue Heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certain you'll recall the words of that popular song of a few years back, My Blue Heaven, which said, Just Molly and me and baby makes three. Well, in our play tonight, everything is heavenly with the marriage of a successful man and wife radio team, except no baby. We hope you'll join us as we unfold their amusing and often heartbreaking efforts to adopt one. And as our stars of this successful 20th Century Fox picture, we have the original players. Two stars who have danced and sung their way to one of the most popular teams on the screen, Betty Grable and Dan Daly. And speaking of heavenly stars, have you noticed the complexions of our Hollywood Lux girls? You know, screen actresses are devoted to Lux Toilet Soap Care for smoother, lovelier complexions. A beauty care you can depend on with your daily Lux facials. Now, My Blue Heaven, starring Betty Grable as Kitty and Dan Daly as Jack Moran. <laughs> Those of us who listen to Kitty and Jack Moran on the radio, and who of us don't, know that Kitty wasn't on the air last night. And most of us know the reason why. There was an automobile accident a few days ago, and Kitty's still in the hospital. And still they come. I've never seen so many flowers. You ever try to grow flowers, Kitty? No, never. It's a wonderful hobby, you know. And there's nothing like a hobby to keep your mind... Doctor, uh... does Jack know... Have you told him? That you lost your baby? That I can never have another one? That in all probability you can never have another one. Yes, Kitty. He knows. He wanted a baby so badly. And I felt so good, so right these last few months. Jack's waiting outside. He's worried about you. I want to tell him that you're all right. You are all right. Yes. I'm all right. That's the way to talk. Well, I'll tell Jack to come here now. I'll drop by again this afternoon. Stop worrying, Jack. Dr. Graham says I feel fine. I... I guess I do. That's not all he says, honey. He says you'll be out of here in three or four days. You know, I've been thinking we ought to take a little trip. Get on a boat, maybe. I thought we had a radio program. Uh, you're not even to think about it. Did Mr. Carroll say that? Several times. Well, we've either got the nicest sponsor in the business or... He just wants to get rid of me. As a matter of fact, he wants us to go on television. Television? Oh, we didn't get into it at all. I didn't know how you'd feel about it, and I told him we'd think it over. How soon could we start? Oh, well, any time, I suppose. Well, it's something we can keep it in mind. Jack. Jack, I'd like to do it as quickly as we can. Well, what about a vacation? We don't need a vacation. Well, it takes time to put a television show together. What about the writers? Janet and Walter. Now, you know they're going to quit. They bought that farm, and Walt's going to write a book or something. They'd come back if we asked them to. Well, no harm in asking, I suppose. Don't you see, dear? I want to work. I want to take my mind off things. And at least this is new and different. Well, maybe you're right. And in television, except for a few stars, why, the thing's wide open, huh? We can move right in, you and I. We'll make this our baby, and it... Oh, I, I'm sorry, Kitty. I, I didn't mean to say that. It's all right. We mustn't be afraid to talk about it. Jack, next week maybe maybe we could drive out and see them. Walt and Janet, I mean. Well, whatever you say, honey, only I... Only what? Well, uh, they're kids. Now, every child you see, it's just bound to remind you that... We've just got to face it, that's all. Sure, honey. Sure. Why not phone them now? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Come on, sing it on the sunset. Sing it on the one. Sing it on the one. Don't. 
It's way past your bedtime, kids. Besides, Mr. and Mrs. Moran are our guests. They didn't come way out here just to sing for you. Just one more song, please, Miss Moran. Come oh, on, really? say it. Sing another Give up. One. They're all yours, Walt. Yeah, you see that, Kitty? When they don't mind, they're my kids. <laughs> now, look here. I'll give you exactly... Now, wait a minute. Maybe we like to sing for them. Do you ever think of that? <laughs> okay. I guess I know when I'm licked. All right, kids, what song do you want to hear? Oh, wait, wait a minute, minute. wait. Now, wait, wait a minute. Song. Wait a minute. It's Tony's turn. That's what I was trying to say. Would you sing the one about... Halloween? Yeah, yeah the one about oh, Halloween, Halloween eh? Yeah. That's what you want to hear. Well, that's what you're going to get. Okay, kids, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize how this came about? When it all started? Why it exists? Well, we're about to tell you. It ain't no fairy tale, but it's grim. Yuck, 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 yuck. Once upon a time in the long, long ago... Man's courage was high, but his spirit was low. People grew tired of all work and no play. They felt the need of a jolly holiday. Then along came Christmas, along came Easter, along came the 4th of July. Then along came a man by the name of Berlin, who took every holiday that ever has been. He wrote about Christmas. He wrote about Easter. He wrote about the 4th of July. His mind was fertile And his pen was keen But he never wrote a word about Halloween Halloween, Halloween Hot jack-o'-lantern, it's Halloween Apples hanging high There's a big pumpkin pie in the sky Children sing, children walk Who gives a darn if your face is false? Jump on your broom like a witch. Go and toss all your gloom in the ditch. Go out on the street for a trick or a treat. You're a cinch to strike it rich. Halloween, Halloween. All other holidays fall between. The night of all hallows, so light up the tallow and make it a bright Halloween. Screaming, so don't you get caught in between On this night full of prankles Delightful old folks It's Halloween Oh, that was wonderful Sing it again, sing it again All right, now straight up those stairs Yeah, no radio and no talking And lights out in 30 seconds Good night, good night. Oh, good night. Oh, Janet Janet, they're so wonderful Ah, oh, thanks I'm so jealous, I think I'll go home They're sure crazy about you Say, that Tony's quite a charmer. He looks just like you, Walt. Oh? Now, just a minute. Fortunately, those children all look like the mother. Oh, that's funny, because two of them aren't ours, you know. Aren't yours? Oh, I thought you knew. Laura and Tony are adopted. Well, this is the first I ever heard of it. Well, when did you do it, Janet? I, I mean, why? Oh, well, for the very simple reason that for the first three years of our marriage, there wasn't even a sign of a family. So, out of desperation, we decided to adopt one. Yeah, and then, brother, one, two, three in a row. Henry, uh, Dorothy, and Jane. But you said Tony, too. Well, Tony's mother and father were killed in an accident. He wasn't quite three months old when we got him. Uh, Kitty, have you and Jack... I mean... Well, wouldn't it be a good idea? Adopt a baby? Where did you get them? Through the Sarah Wilson Foundation. I'll give you the address if you ever... Now, look, Jan, the real reason Jack and Kitty came out here was to talk to us about television. Is that right, Kitty? What? Oh. Oh, yes. But I think we can dispose of it very quickly. Oh, not interested, huh? Why, you inconsiderate city-bred fellow. You think I'd give up my book and leave this farm for... for that? Unless, Unless of course, course, it, it pays money. money. <laughs> Only a couple of thousand a week. Huh, mere pittance. <laughs> real money? Exchangeable in any bar in America. Well, let's drink it over, friend. Let's drink it over. All right, and be careful about the ice. Janet, huh? about that address, the foundation. I'll get it for you right now. Keep talking, boys. We'll be right back. Now, first of all, Mr. and Mrs. Moran, have you ever applied for a child in any other home or agency? Why, no, Miss Gilbert, never. 
Who sent you to us? Mr. and Mrs. Walter Pringle. Oh, yes, of course. You'll probably want to use them for one of your references. One? <laughs> You'll need at least three. Uh, father's occupation? <laughs> We're Kitty and Jack Moran, remember? Oh, yes, of course. But I, I still don't seem to place you. Uh, what do you do? Well, for almost ten years now, we have been on... On the radio. Now we're going into television. Oh. What does that mean? Oh. Well, it's just that we've had two or three rather uh, unfortunate experiences with people from the stage. And Mrs. Johnston, uh, Sarah Wilson was her mother. Well, she's a wonderful woman, but... But she doesn't think that actors are parent material, is that it? Oh, there's no set rule. It all depends on the individual. Uh, what sort of program do you do? Uh, we have a comedy program. And we have been known to sing and dance. <laughs> I suppose I should be ashamed to admit it, but I never listen to programs like that. Squeaking doors. Murder. That's the kind of thing I like. <gasps> How in the world did they ever think up all those terrible things? Uh, would it be possible for us to see the babies and perhaps give you an idea of what we'd like? Yeah, let's look them over. Oh, well, there aren't any available now, Mrs. Moran. No babies? Well, it may take weeks, months. And first, of course, we have to make a thorough investigation. Oh, but I'm sure everything will turn out just the way you want it. Sure. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, Miss Gilbert. Meanwhile, I'm certainly going to be watching for your television program. Maybe we ought to throw in a few squeaking doors. Jack. Goodbye, Miss Gilbert. Thank you. Yeah, it's been nice seeing you. Goodbye, Mr. Moran. Do you realize what that woman said about us? I guess I should have married a truck driver. What's wrong with actors? I'd make a wonderful father. I think I'll go back and tell her a thing or two. We want the baby, though, don't we? Well, sure we do, but why do they make cracks like that? What's wrong with theatrical people? I pay my taxes, don't I? Let them investigate me. Why, if they wanted to run a benefit for that joint, the first people they'd call on to be actors, right? Jack, please. Everybody's staring at Well, let them stare. Let them stare. Let them get an earful. They don't ask a truck driver to drive his truck for nothing. I should say not. Well, all an actor's got is his talent, and he gives it to him for nothing. And the next time the Sarah Wilson Foundation wants to run a benefit, let them put on a truck driver. Quiet. You're attracting a crowd. I sure am. That just proves I can do business any place. Hey, Pat. Well? And what's wrong with us truck drivers? Hmm? Oh, uh... Well, uh, nothing, sir. Nothing at all. I, I think you're all charming. <laughs> you bet I'm charming. <laughs> Come on, Kitty. Let's well, get out of here. we got to get the rehearsal. I beg your pardon? Yes, ma'am? I'm Miss Gilbert from the Sarah Wilson Foundation. Miss Evers and I would like to see Mr. and Mrs. Moran. Oh, sorry, ma'am, but they're rehearsing their television show. Yes, I know. We can wait. Miss Gilbert, huh? In case they don't remember my name, you see, it's been over two months since they came to see me. Just mention the Wilson Foundation. Yes, ma'am. I'll tell them. All right, boys, all right. We'll take it from the beginning. Deductible. Let's go, Kitty. We're on. The biggest complaint wherever we go is taxes, taxes, taxes. The question is, where do we get the dough for taxes, taxes, taxes? Income taxes. People are running from store to store, from Macy's up to taxes. Nobody wants to work anymore because of income taxes. Income taxes. This is the kind of thinking that could easily be destructible. Haven't they learned the more they make, the more there is deductible? Deductible, 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 deductible. It's deductible. It's deductible. A man can make a phone call from Jersey to the coast. It used to be expensive, but today you'll hear him boast. It's deductible. It's deductible. You give a pompous party, pretentious with your booze. They break up all your furniture, but what do you got to lose? Crazy world, crazy time. Love that world. What's, What's the, the difference, difference but nothing rhymes? It's uproarious. Ah, oh, but it's glorious. If you're the boss, then you can toss it off and lost the game. Why complain? We're all interested in redemption. 
How do you get your maximum exemptions? The, the dependent, dependent must be a one, one of, of the, the following. following. Grandson, granddaughter, great-grandson, great-granddaughter. Father, mother, sister, brother, half-sister, half-brother. Grandfather, grandmother, nephew, niece, uncle, aunt. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, brother-in-law. Stepson, stepdaughter, stepfather, stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister. Yes, I'm telling you, mister. There's a deductible. Deductible. There's a deductible. 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 A Texan drills an oil well, the oil well won't produce. The Texan doesn't worry because he's got a good excuse. It's deductible. Deductible. It's deductible. Deductible. Producer gets an angel, producer gets a flop. The angel doesn't worry because the flop comes off the top. Crazy one. Crazy five. Love that world. What's the difference if nothing rhymes? But it's national. If you decide to take that ride and be a bride and groom, bed and room. Deductible including offspring. Elizabeth Ann, Betty Lou. Oliver Dan, Penelope Sue. A Jimmy, Johnny, Daisy, Harry. Randy, Ronnie, Maisie, Mary. And all you want. Swell, swell. Do it like that tonight. We've got to take a look at that dance routine for Gloria. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. Moran. Oh, yes, Tommy? A couple of dames want to know, can they see you? Oh, not now. I'm worn out. Who are they? One of them's a Miss Gilbert. Well, just ask them to excuse me, huh? Say I'm still rehearsing or something. Forget it. I'll take care of them. But be nice to them. Sure. Leave it to me. Wait a minute. Did you say Miss Gilbert? Yeah, from a foundation or something. Oh, Tommy, quick. Show her into my dressing room and be particularly nice to her. This may be very important. Yes, ma'am. Right away. And I hope you don't mind our barging in like this, Mrs. Moran. Oh, no. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I I hope you'll excuse me. That's you. quite all right, Mrs. Moran. Hey, Kitty, how come you... Oh, oh. Excuse me. Jack, you remember Miss Gilbert from the foundation? Foundation? The Sarah Wilson Foundation. Oh, yeah, Miss Gilbert. Squeaking door. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I didn't want to come until I had some good news for you and, and could kill two birds with one stone. Good news? Well, I, I think we may have a baby for you. A baby? A fine boy. No kidding. Do you hear my knees knocking? Oh, when can we get him? Almost any time now. That is, of course, as soon as Mrs. Johnston meets you. Mrs. Johnston? Oh, yeah, the lady who has that slight objection. Jack? To... Well, what I meant to say was that Mrs. Johnston is a very low... Uh, you're not Mrs. Johnston. Oh, no. I'm Amelia Evers, just a nurse at the foundation. Oh, well, I'm glad to know that. I I, I don't know how to thank you, Miss Gilbert. I, I just don't know what to say. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Moran. I'm so glad for you both. Now, if it's convenient for you to drop by tomorrow afternoon... Now, let's see. That's Saturday. Oh, yes. Of course we'll stop by. Yeah, and if there's anything I can do for you, Miss Gilbert... Do you really mean that? Anything. Just name it. Well, there's one thing you could do for my friend here. Oh, please, Irma. Doesn't matter. Not really. Oh, no. Go ahead. What is it? Well, it's... It's an autographed picture. Well, would you like one of us together or separate ones Irma, or anything? Irma, I told oh, you Oh, Mr. Not... Moran won't mind. It's just that my friend's a great television fan. <laughs> she even looks at wrestling. <laughs> and she's simply crazy about Milton Burl. She is. Oh, but if it's the slightest bother, Mr. Moran... Oh, no, no, no. I'll ask Milty the next time I see him. Thank you so much, Mr. Moran. That's quite all right. And if you can't get one of him, why, one of yours will do just fine. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's good. Thank you. Well, goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon, Miss Gilbert. Yeah, goodbye, Miss Gilbert. thank you again. Jack. Oh, Jack. We've got a baby. Congratulations, Mrs. Moran. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Come right in, Miss Evers. Well, here we are. Here's the young man now. Oh. Wouldn't you like oh. to hold your baby, Mrs. Moran? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, Jack, isn't he beautiful? Yeah. 
Too bad our name isn't Kablinski or something. Otherwise, he'd make pretty good backfield material for Notre Dame. Oh, what a wonderful baby. Are these the prospective parents? Oh, oh, Mrs. Johnson. Yes, this is Mr. and Mrs. Moran, Mrs. Johnson. How, How do, do you do? do, Mrs. Johnson? You're aware of the responsibility you're assuming? Oh, yes, Mrs. Johnson. I think so. Uh, Miss Gilbert tells me you're on the stage. Oh, we were on the stage. We're in television now. Well, I suppose she told you I do not approve of actors. Yes. Well, we had sir, heard some sort of rumor to that effect. Oh, it's no rumor. Actors are too undependable for me. Have you two ever been divorced? No. No, not yet. How, how long have you been married? Eight. Nine years. Uh, uh, nine, nine years. To each other? <laughs> I thought you already had us investigated. I like to make my own investigations. I'm sure you'll find the Morans have more than met our requirements, Mrs. Johnston. I hope so. You know, of course, that you're getting this baby on probation only. Oh? You, you mean that he... He still isn't our baby? A child cannot be legally adopted in this state unless he's lived in the same house for at least one year. We have the right to take it away any time we feel that it's not to the child's best advantage to remain. Now, um, I want to see your home. Where do you live? Central Park West. You have your own automobile? Yes. A and it's closed. Leave it here. I have my own chauffeur. I don't trust myself or one of my babies to a strange driver. Take the baby, Miss Everett. Oh, Oh, couldn't I keep him? I'll carry him for you. I I think she really likes you. Well, if you ask me, I think she's just... Shh, Jack. I was only going to say that I think she'd be pretty good Notre Dame material, too. Boy, what a stiff arm. <laughs> This way, Mrs. Johnston. Our, our apartment's just down the hall. That noise? Where's all that noise coming from? Oh, it sounds like it's coming from the end of the hall. Yeah, who's having a party? Well, I hope this sort of thing doesn't go on all the time. Oh, why, it's usually as quiet as a church here. Well, you'd better speak to the management about it. People like this have no business in a house where there's a baby. Who are these neighbors of yours? I, uh, I'm afraid that whatever it is, it's coming from our own apartment, Mrs. Johnston. Your apartment? Uh, Selma must have left the radio on. Oh, yeah, Selma. That's our maid. Well, uh, won't you come in? Oh, quiet, everybody. Please. Oh, please be quiet. This is Mrs. Johnson from the foundation and, and Miss Gilbert and the nurse. Well, you remember me, Mrs. Johnson. Walter Pringle? Well, come in, won't you? I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnston. We didn't know anyone was going to be here. Well, you didn't think we were going to let you bring the baby home to an empty house, did you? Hey, Janet, get some champagne. Walt, please. Huh? Mrs. Johnston, these people are, are, are all friends of ours. They're on our show. They just wanted to surprise us, I Take guess. Take the baby, Miss Evers. Oh, no. I'm afraid you're going to think I'm a very mean old woman, my dear. But I have grave responsibilities in these matters. I simply can't leave the baby with you under these circumstances. Oh, no. Please. This won't happen again. I, I promise you. I'm sorry. We may be old-fashioned, but we've clung to our standards for a good many years. Walter. Janet. Tell her how this happened. Tell her we didn't know anything about it. Oh, Mrs. Johnston, I, I, I assure you that Mrs. Moran had no idea We that just we... wanted to show them how tickled we all were about their baby. Of course, but I hardly think it was necessary to have a drunken party. Come along, nurse. I'm... I'm sorry, Mrs. Moran. I, I'll talk to her. Later on, perhaps. Oh, I could cut my throat. It's nobody's fault. It just wasn't in the cards for us to have a baby, that's all. We'll see that you get another baby, Kitty, even if I have to steal one. Oh, I... I think the kindest thing we can all do now is... Just get out of here and go home. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Kitty. I'll call you in the morning. Goodbye, Kitty. Goodbye, Jack. Want to say a cigarette? No. Nothing. I heard as fast as I could, Miss Kitty. I told them store folks I had to get back home before that baby got here. You know how it is. It doesn't matter, Selma. And I got just what you said. Bottles, diapers, talcum powder. When you see all this stuff... Take it out of here and get rid of it. Mr. Jack, the baby... There isn't going to be any baby. Ain't going to be no baby. No, now get out of here. Burn it. Give it away, anything. Just get it out of here. And take the rest of this junk with you. <laughs> Act two 
of My Blue Heaven, starring Betty Grable as Kitty and Dan Daly as Jack. A few weeks have gone by, and Jack and Kitty are discovering that hard work can cure anything. That is, almost anything. They're in the television studio now in the midst of rehearsal. But I tell you, this is important. It can wait, Walt. Kitty and I are going to rehearse. No, it can't wait. Well? Look, last month when they took your baby away, I made a promise. I told you I'd find another one, didn't I? Well, I have. Walt? Yeah. The mother is a girl who used to work for us down in the country. The father skipped town. Anyway, the mother and the baby are with relatives out in Jersey. Well, I've talked to them. You can have the child. Uh, for a consideration, of course. Now, wait a minute. How legal is all this? I mean... Look, you want a baby, don't you? No. No, we don't. No? After all the talk about... I appreciate what you've done, Walt. But I'm not going through it all again. Kitty's right. Come on, honey, let's go to work. I'm sorry, Walt. Well, it's okay. I'm just wondering what's going to happen now to that poor little kid. What is it? A boy or a girl? A girl. Well, I better phone Janet. Maybe I can talk her into taking the baby herself. Uh, how old is she? I don't know exactly. Six or seven months. Cute? Well, if you don't mind blonde. When could we see her, Walt? You mean... Hey, you... Kitty, are you still working this show? Jack! Jack, we... We've just decided to take the baby. Well, I never doubted it for a moment. <laughs> when do we go to Jersey, Walt? I'll phone him right now. Tell him we'll drive out tonight. You can get out of the car. This man we want to see is the girl's uncle. He owns this roadhouse. He told me to bring you around to the back. Why do we have to sneak in the back way? I feel like a kidnapper or something. No, it's okay. They just want all this kept as private as possible. Now, follow me. Bring them in, please, and close the door. This is Mr. and Mrs. Moran. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is our lawyer, Mr. Tuttle. This won't take but a minute. All you have to do is sign the papers. Uh, could we see the baby first? Sure, sure. I'll get her. Is the mother here? No, it's uh, better for everyone concerned that she isn't. Does she know who's taking the child? All she knows is that it's going to be well taken care of. <clears throat> you uh, understand about my fee, Mr. Moran? Yes, I have the money right here. Now, wait a minute. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I, I feel so guilty. Me too. It's like we were committing a crime or something. Come on, Jack. Let's get out of here. Well, here she is. We've decided not to take her. Uh, not take her? That's right. We changed our minds, that's all. Now, just a minute. Take it easy. If they don't want the baby, they don't want it. <laughs> Kitty, come here. <laughs> kind of cute, huh? <laughs> Look at those little hands. Like she's just got a manicure. And those cheeks. We'd have to start her on a diet. Oh, let me hold her. She's sure a nice baby. Jack. Jack. She's smiling at me. Well, I told you she would. Look, you see, she finished the entire bottle. Okay, okay, but now it's my turn. Where's her hairbrush? You ever see curls like this on a baby? Now, take it easy, Papa. She just had dinner. Hmm. You know, I think she knows me. Well, of course she knows you. It's been almost three weeks. Watch it. Here comes the nurse. Oh, Miss Bates, ravishing as ever, I see. What are you doing, Mrs. Moran? We're just playing with the baby. Well, put her back in the crib, please. Yeah, we got to get going, honey. Come on, rehearse. I see you've changed her. She was wet. Well, you're her mother, of course. She was also hungry. I fed her. Her feeding wasn't due for ten minutes yet. My mother had seven children, Miss Bates. And when they were hungry, she fed them. Times have changed. Mothers haven't. Well, really, Mrs. Moran, you're determined to spoil her. A little love never spoiled anyone. I might as well not have a baby. I'm never allowed to touch her. I, I can't feed her. I can't kiss her. We've been through all this, Mrs. Moran, many times. We certainly have. 
But we're not going to go through it again. This bait's your fire. Well, I was only trying to do my duty. You heard me. Get your things and leave. Now. Very well. I shall. To the showers, Butch. I'll mail you a check in the morning. Who knows? Maybe old mule face is good to her mother. She never had a mother. <laughs> well, come on, honey. Kiss Her Majesty goodnight and let's get on our way. The baby. Jack. Who's going to stay with the baby? Oh, great. Selma's night out. What a time to think of that. Well, I just couldn't stand that woman one more minute. Well, it looks like we'll have to tomorrow morning. I wouldn't ask her to do anything. I'll stay with the baby myself. Kitty, we've got a show to do. Oh, you can say I have a cold. Gloria can take my place. She knows the routines as well as I do. Gloria? Who wants Gloria? Well, if you'd only kept your pretty little mouth shut until morning. Now go on. Phone Gloria. She's been hoping I'd break a leg or something. Okay. But I think you're taking an awful chance. You know, that Gloria's kind of sexy, you know. <laughs> oh, sure. Just your type. Now get out of here and let me be a mother. <laughs> Hey, you. Sleeping beauty. Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Oh, it's you. Who'd you expect? The baby. Is she covered? Yeah, the baby's fine. Now, what's the idea of going to sleep in a chair? Well, what if she woke up and I didn't hear her? We watched the show, Jack. Not bad. And Gloria? Well. No, yeah, that's what I say. She isn't here. It's a good thing you said that. Jack. Would you mind very much if we didn't get another nurse right away? But you can't take care of a baby. What do you know about them? Nothing. That's why I want to learn. It was so much fun tonight, being able to pick her up whenever I wanted to and changing her whether she needed it or not and <laughs> kissing her whenever I liked. I, I'm a new woman. I just can't wait for Mother's Day. And the show? Well, I think Gloria's amply demonstrated the sponsor that sponsor could... hired you and me, honey. You can fix it. You're a genius, remember? Oh, just for a little while, Jack. Please. You sure want to be a mother, don't you? Well, okay. I'll talk to Mr. Carroll in the morning. Of course, if you ever get the idea that Gloria could really take my place, I'll have to shoot you. Good. Now, come on, honey. Let's hit the sack. And leave the baby here? All by herself? Roll up your sleeves, dear. You're moving her crib inside with us. Can I come in? Come on in, Gloria. Be ready in a minute. Rehearsal's going good today, isn't it? Well, our opening's still kind of ragged. Well, then let's get out there and see what we can do about it. Oh, it's this bow tie again. If I ever lay my hands on the guy that thought of these things. But I like you in bow ties. They make you look so young. I'll be an old man before I get this one tied. Let me help you. Just stand still. You look kind of cute today. Um, how's Kitty? Fine. Still sold on the idea of just being Mama, huh? Matter of fact, she's taking the afternoon off. Oh? First time in weeks, big shopping spree. Someone's taking care of. What's the matter? You know... If your nose turned up just a little teeny bit more. <laughs> Leave my nose alone. I bet when you were a little girl, you played about the best game of post office in your town, didn't you? But I, I've been out of practice lately. Well, we better do something about that. Oh, Jack. Oh, darling. <sighs> I feel like I've been waiting for this all my life. Hmm. And me, what hates to keep a lady waiting. Anybody home? Kitty! Well, gee, Kitty, I'm glad to see you. Come on in. Bye. <laughs> you do seem glad to see me. Hello, Kitty. Hi, Gloria. I thought you were shopping. I am. But as long as I was in the neighborhood... Why, Jack... You're bleeding. Uh, oh, uh, ble bleeding? Uh, I uh, am? I am? Did you cut yourself? No. Uh, uh, oh, why, it's only lipstick. How stupid of me. Oh, well, now, how do you suppose I got lipstick? And such a lovely shade, too. What do you call it, Gloria? Careless lips. What a charming name. Yours? Oh, it's no use, Jack. 
you'll have to know sometime. Know what? Oh, it's just a gag. Gloria and I were kidding. And... Dad, please. Kitty's grown up. Jack and I are... are in love. Oh. Madly? Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, don't joke about it. We've fought it. Really, we have. But it's no use, Kitty. I have never said one word to you about being in love. Where did you ever get an idea that Jack, I... Jack, you're interrupting Gloria. Excuse me. Go ahead, dear. Well, I suppose we've always known it in our hearts, but... We only admitted it today. I never admitted anything. Now, there's no reason to get excited, I am not excited. I am simply trying to tell you Later, dear. Later. Now, sit down, Gloria. This is a very interesting situation. I've got a couple of changes for you, Jack. You give me your script up. Kitty! Hi, Walter. Well, I thought you'd be home mixing up a batch of pablum. Haven't you heard? I've decided to come back to work. What? Hmm? And about time, too. Don't you think so, darling? Well, yeah, sure, uh, but what about the baby? Well, it's like you said all along, dear. We'll get another nurse, and with Selma there... Wonderful. I'll start rehearsing, Walt, just as soon as we get a little business finished here. Take your time, Kitty. <laughs> See you around, Gloria. <laughs> now, where were we, Gloria? Oh, yes. Of course, there are several ways a wife could look at this. Really? For instance, I could shoot you both. I suppose that's rather uncivilized, Well, if I... that's your attitude, I'm going. Kitty, would you please let me say something? Later, dear. This is a problem for Gloria and me. Now, certainly, I don't want to stand in the way of anyone's happiness. Perhaps we can arrange a nice, quiet divorce. Divorce? Well, if you have a better suggestion... This whole thing is cockeyed. Sure, I kissed her. She's kind of a cute kid, but on the goofy side, but... Jack! <laughs> Now you've heard her. Well, I'm human. Stop bragging and just go on with your story. <laughs> well, one kiss doesn't mean a guy wants to start paying alimony. Especially the first time he gets caught. What am I going to do now? Well, I'll tell you. In the future, you'll be a lot better off keeping your mind on your job and your hands off my husband. Because you see, he's not a bit clever. Oh! Well, dear, shall we get ready to rehearse? What a life. A guy can't even pinch a girl without hearing wedding bells. And... Ow! That hurt. I meant it to. I'll have a mark on me as big as a hen's egg. That'll give you a rough idea of what'll happen the next time I catch you being human. Now, let's get out there and find the piano. Quiet, please. Quiet. Are the Marans ready? Don't rock the boat number all the way through. Dear, keep our love afloat, dear. Strike that happy note, dear. We're not lost at sea. Keep our love steady, never high or heady. Always keep it ready the way it ought to be. Even though we're out in deep water, we must save the future for some and don't rock the ship, dear. Here's a little tip, dear. Make each trip a pip, dear. Just for the likes of you and me. Don't rock the tug, dear. Love is just a drug, dear. All I need is hug, dear. Oh, we're, we're not lost, lost at sea. Don't rock the scow now. Charmy off the bow now. Love is here and now. Wow, the way it ought to be. Even though we're out in deep waters, we must save the future for sons and daughters. Don't rock the sloop, dear. Don't be nincompoop, dear. Lovers loop the loop. Dear, just like the likes of you and me. Don't rock the yacht, dear. Don't you go to pot, dear. This year is a hot year. We're not lost at sea. Don't rock the launch, dear. Keep your moral staunch, dear. Girdle up your paunch, dear, the way it ought to be. Even though we're out in deep waters, we must save the future for sons and daughters. Don't rock the smack, Jack. 
Don't you turn your back, Jack. Jack. You're my cracker, Jack. Jack, just like the likes of you and me. Don't rock the yawl, dear boy. With that southern roll, dear boy. Let's not have a brawl, dear boy. Oh, we're not lost to see you. Keep our love afloat, dear. Strike that happy note, dear. Just for the likes of you and me. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks. Kitty, you were great. All right, everybody, take five minutes. Okay. We'll take the dance number next, piano only. Now, Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran. Take it easy, kid. We weren't that bad. There was a phone call for you from your apartment. The operator seemed pretty excited. Well, who was it? What'd they say? Well, the operator couldn't understand it very well, but it was something about a baby. What about the baby? Jack, get Thelma on the phone. I'll, I'll change right away. What did she say, Tommy? Well, I, I didn't want to tell you in front of Mrs. Moran. What did she say? The baby's gone, Mr. Moran. Someone came and took the baby away. continue with the third act of My Blue Heaven in a few moments. <laughs> the curtain rises on act three of My Blue Heaven. Starring Betty Grable as Kitty and Dan Daly as Jack. Kitty and Jack have rushed back to their apartment with their friends, Janet and Walter Pringle. Selma, the maid, is half hysterical. <laughs> I've done my best, Miss Kitty. I've done my best. Well, take a look around. Ain't no use looking, Mr. Jack. The baby ain't here. Ain't anybody here. Where is she? Where is the baby? They come and taken her away. Who, Selma? Who? Some folks that says the baby was there. Oh, no. Now, stop carrying on, Selma. Just tell us what happened. Well, I was sitting here with the baby in my lap when the lady and two gentlemen come in. And one of them said the baby was his and he wanted flesh and blood. And the other one said he was a lawyer and if I didn't give the baby back, they'd call the police. Oh, Jack. Jack. Oh, Miss Kitty, I tried to stop them. I told them that nobody would touch that baby, but they paid me no mind. They just took her out of my arms. They can't. They can't. She's mine. She's my baby. Oh, Kitty. They can't, Janet. They can't. I want my baby. I'm going to find my baby. Kitty, wait. Jack, who's your lawyer? You'll find out soon enough. That's just where we're going. <laughs> Very little I could do tonight, Mrs. Moran. I'll get on it the first thing in the morning. But I'm afraid that legally you haven't a chance. But the mother gave us the baby. We signed the papers. We gave them every cent they asked for. Yes, I, I understand all that. But there's a definite procedure prescribed for the adoption of children in this state. And you'll usually find that the courts bend over backward to return a child to its natural parents. Well, I'm sorry we got you up so late. We just didn't know where to turn. <laughs> That's unimportant. I only wish I had a right to be more encouraging. Come on, Jack. We may as well go home. Kitty, you sure you're all right? We go on in about ten minutes. I don't want you to worry about me anymore. 
All you've done since last night is a ball. Oh, honey, it's just so hopeless. You got a minute, Mr. Moran? Come in, Tommy. I know you go on soon, but a couple of women are here from the Sarah Wilson Foundation. After the show. Please, Tommy, just ask them to wait. Sure. Whatever you say, Mrs. Moran. This will only take a moment. Thank you, young man. What is it, Mrs. Johnston? Our show is just I've about... had you on my conscience. And at my age, one can't afford a bad conscience. If you don't mind, we'd, we'd rather not go into it. Mrs. Johnston only wants to say that we have another baby for you, Mrs. Moran. I'll do the talking, Miss Gilbert. Sorry. I've brought along all the necessary papers, and if you'd like to just... We don't want another baby. What's that? We had a baby. We loved it. It's gone. We can't substitute just any baby. Oh, I know all about that. I've kept my eye on you two. But you'll, you'll feel differently when you see this boy. Ten minutes, Mr. Moran. We'll be right there. We appreciate your offer, Mrs. Johnston. I but acted we... too hastily the day I took the child away from you. But I've no false pride in admitting I was wrong. Yes, well, thank you, And but now we... you're acting hastily. That I can't permit. I shan't leave until you sign these papers. Here, use my pen. All you have to well, do is to sign... Well, congratulations. Oh, Kitty, it's such wonderful news. I knew it'd work out somehow. Oh, hello, Miss Johnston. Mr. Pringle, I believe. Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's not rush into this thing. We haven't made up our minds whether we want it or not. Made up your mind? But you haven't any choice. What do you think we've been? We just delivered it. Delivered it? Yeah. Delivered what? Janet, what are you all talking about? Well, the baby, of course. What else? The father's went off again. Isn't that wonderful? I'm naming him as father of the year. And there'll be no slip-up this time, I guarantee it. We've had our own lawyer talk to the mother herself. Jack. Where is she, Walt? The baby. With Selma, of course, and the lap of luxury. Oh, we wanted to bring her straight here, oh, but... Oh, darling, we've got the baby back. We've got the baby back. Well, honey, it looks like we've got two babies back, unless Mrs. Johnson... You Johnston... still haven't signed the papers. Do you want the baby or don't you? Oh, of course we do. We want them both. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Johnston. Wait, what? What? Why, she kissed Mrs. Johnson. And thank you, Miss Gilbert. And you, Janet, and, and Walt. Hey, is everybody going crazy around here? <laughs> ah... This kind of lunacy I like. Yeah, well, <laughs> come on, honey. We still have a show to do. And sorry to rush you, Mrs. Johnston, but you know how it is. Now, if you'd all just leave us alone for a oh, moment, yeah, please. Yeah, Kitty, what's the matter, honey? I don't know. My head feels kind of funny. Mine, too. Well, it, it's all this excitement. I'll get you a glass of water. No. No, I'll be all right in a minute. Maybe I better tell Gloria to stand by. Oh, no. Not that. I'll be fine. Just... Just a little dizzy, I guess. There goes that red light. They want us on stage. Well, then what are we doing here? Come on, Papa. We're on. When whippoorwills call And evening is nigh I, I hurry to my blue heaven I turn to the Watching Kitty? Yeah. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Something else. Do you think she's all right? I don't know. I just don't know. Just you and just me. Just you and just me. And baby makes free. And baby makes free. We're happy in my. We were sure worried about you there for a minute. Oh, I, I'm fine. I, Come on, honey. I'm think... taking you to your dressing room. But don't be silly. All I want is a nice big dill pickle. Just one dill pickle. Kitty. Kitty. Whoa, quick. Get a doctor. Yeah. Look, the doctor, he's coming out of a dressing room. Doc? Doc, how is she? Fine, fine. Not a thing to worry about. You mean there's nothing wrong with her? Nothing at all. Except she's going to have a baby. <laughs> she's going to what? Oh, no. About Christmas, I'd say. But but she can't have a baby. You <laughs> told us yourself after that accident. You told well, us... Well, that... maybe she can't. But she is. Oh, me. Three. 
Well, it's a little early to determine that. That's what you think. <laughs> Can I go in now, Doc? Well, certainly. Go on in. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Looks like they're doing the rest of the show without us, honey. Who cares? Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I never fainted before in my life. Yeah. You know what that crazy doctor out there was trying to tell me? It's all right. They're deductible. In a minute, our stars will return. Safe Lux Flakes for slips and girdles, nighties, gloves. All fine things a lady loves. It's Safe Lux Flakes. Precious nylon, filmy lace, fluffy sweaters washed so safe. Silken slips, frilly undies, fragile blouses just for Sundays. All fine washables you wear need safe, gentle Lux Flakes care. Nylon, rayon, wool, pique. Linen, satin, silk, chambray. All fine washables you wear need safe, gentle Lux Flakes care. Yes, all lovely washables look lovelier longer with safe Lux care. That's why fine lingerie makers, 33 to 1, recommend safe Lux care. So start the Lux habit tonight. Lux care, you know, is the safest washing care in all the world. And safe new Lux is enriched with color freshener. An amazing new action that makes colors sparkle, grow lovelier, washing after washing. Yes, for everything that's washable that you want to stay lovely, use Safe Lux Flakes. Safe Lux Flakes. For slips and girdles, nighties, gloves, all fine things a lady loves. It's Safe Lux Flakes. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our star. And here they are, coming forward for a well-earned curtain call. Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Well, Betty, how is the pride of your life? Harry James and your two lovely little daughters, Vicky and Jessica. Well, they're just fine, Bill. Uh, you know, I hope you're bringing them up to be uh, Lux girls. Well, of course. You know I'm devoted to Lux Toilet Soap Care. And what's good enough for America's number one pinup girl ought to be good enough for her children. <laughs> oh, I don't impress them at all, Dan. Their idea of the number one attraction is Tyrone. You mean uh, Tyrone Power? No, Tyrone Schultz. He lives down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and how about your pride and joy, Dan? Well, of course, that would be my little boy, Dan Three. But it just so happens that I am the pride of St. Louis. Does St. Louis know about this? Do you, by any chance, mean your latest picture for 20th Century Fox? Yeah, that's right. The Pride I of St. The... Louis? <laughs> I play the famous baseball pitcher, D Dizzy Dean. No comment from me. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you know, I know our listeners will recall that you played a scene from the picture on our Movie Time USA show. And we're all anxious to see it. I hear it's one of your best pictures, Dan. And now, what picture have you chosen for next week, Bill? Well, one that will certainly appeal to you, Betty. Because it's the story of a musician. One of the most outstanding trumpet players of all time. As you've guessed, it's Warner Brothers' Young Man with a Horn. And we'll have three stars who have never before appeared on this stage. Kirk Douglas, Joe Stafford, and Patrice Wymore. Well, we will miss that one, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks for a wonderful entertainment. Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Kirk Douglas, Joe Stafford, and Patrice Wymore in Young Men with a Horn. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Betty Grable appeared tonight through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, whose current production is Phone Call from a Stranger, starring Shelley Winters, Gary Merrill, Michael Rennie, and Betty Davis. Heard in our cast tonight were Olin Soule as Walt, Jean Bates as Janet, Verna Felton as Mrs. Johnson, Elizabeth Root as Gloria, Anne Duran as Miss Gilbert, and Herbert Butterfield, Bill Boucher, Bill Johnstone, Charlotte Lawrence, Myra Marsh, Eddie Firestone, 
Lillian Randolph, Eddie Marr, Bob Griffin, Harry Shearer, and Leon Ledoux. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. <laughs>